أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Welcome, welcome. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have been on my way ever since. I apologize. I know I said I am going to be coming back very, very soon. Salam alaikum. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I love that name. Can you guys hear me very well? Kind of using a new medium. Presenting from my um, from my computer. Salam alaikum, mashallah. So I wanted to a few days ago I came across this video of RFK um, being interviewed um, on this one of my favorite actually YouTubers. Um, um, break the breaking points. I don't know if you guys watch that show. It's a very uh, it's a very good show actually. Um, they're very, um, uh, just very informed, well-informed and very charismatic, uh, 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 people on this channel, um, Crystal Ball, which I really, really like, um, and, uh, Sagar and Cherry, interesting name. Uh, anyway, uh, I like them both. And, um, so they, they, they were interviewing this gentleman. Uh, RFK, uh, which, you know, I used to think this guy was a decent man. Um, I mean, obviously many of us, um, like the Kennedys, um, they were always considered to be an American, uh, royalty and a very decent people. Um, and I, I, Early on, when he started running, um, I mean, he was always a controversial figure, but I always thought he was being picked on for some reason, and uh, especially by the Democrats. But now, I kind of, I kind of think some something's up with this with this gentleman. First of all, we all know he's never going to be the president of the United States, at least anytime soon. Um, but he's just, as time goes by, he's getting weirder and weirder and we, weird, you know, just just becoming more and more, you know, strange um, in his behavior. Uh, but check this video out. Uh, welcome, Naj Shai. Hello, Miss Fathia. I hope you are well. I am well. Thank you so much. But check this video out. I, I was so disgusted, just, just disgusted with him. Just his behavior is, 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 you know, just being in the wrong, not only is he being on the wrong side of history, but he's so uncomfortable. You can tell, you know, his talking points are just probably not his own, <laughs> you know. Um, he, he's, he's coming across to me as more like um, an IDF soldier or IDF uh, uh, spokesperson rather than someone who is running to become the president of the United States. Let's hear this interview and um, I'll, I'll react to it. Um, so let's turn to a little bit of policy and specifically the topic of Israel, obviously very much in the news right now. So President Biden's administration, they have said that they have no red lines for the state of Israel and their conduct in this war. Do you have any red lines for Israel? Well, you know, the, the red lines are that you don't, you don't deliver, you, you do everything you can, which I think Israel is doing right now to avoid civilian casualties, collateral damage in every war, and they're fighting an implacable enemy. I mean, they, they, the uh, word lines are Israel should be doing everything it can to avoid um, civilian casualties. And, and Israel, immediately he says, Israel is doing everything it can. That couldn't be farther from the truth. What? Like, do these people... The people who are actually, you know, like him and many others who are uh, 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 saying these things, including the spokespeople for the for IDF, do they think we're stupid? Do they think the world is not seeing what it's seeing? It's like <laughs> it's like they're trying to tell us, oh, you your eyes are playing tricks on you. Of course, they're killing innocent people. They couldn't care less. They're not even. They're not even hiding the fact that they're targeting 
innocent people and that all Palestinians are combatants to them. And, um, you know, they've said it. It was Maya Angelou that said, um, when someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. There is no other nation, no other country, no other people in the world who are giving the benefit of the doubt like these people are. are. And they don't even want to be. They could care less. Because they're not hiding anything. It, it gets worse. Hold on. I don't think there's any country in the world that would go as far as Israel has gone to not invade Gaza. Israel walked out of Gaza. There's no occupation of Gaza. Israel what? Out. Well, there's a blockade because because God because Hamas declared war on Israel and sent suicide bombers off. So they put up a fence. So it's there, you know, that's like a that's like the guy who kills his father, his parents, and then throws himself on the mercy of the court because he isn't. What <laughs> the the blockade? It's worse than it's worse than it, it. It actually would have been better if if they were occupying it because maybe then it would function. Um, sort of like similar to the West Bank, although West Bankers are being terrorized and 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 being killed uh, as we know it. But at least life is a little bit better. It's like okay, I I invade your home, I take over your home, and then finally after you know the the neighborhood screams and yells at me, and uh, I decide that okay, I will leave your home. But you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blockade your home, and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna make sure that nothing goes in, unless I say so, and nothing comes out, nothing or no one comes out unless I say so. That's like, where's the freedom in that? Like, what, what is he talk, talking about? I mean, these people are put on a diet; they don't get enough food; they don't get. I just realized there's a whole list of things, ordinary things that people eat that cannot enter Gaza. Who the hell are these people? You you keep hearing things like, oh, why is it Israel's fault that, you know, uh, food or that Palestinians or Gazans get water and, and, and food? It should never be their business. It should, they should have never being responsible. It's not like they give it to them for free from the goodness of their hearts. They only control what goes in and what comes in. It's not that they're giving it to them. The Palestinians purchase their food and they get their water, but it's like you have a bully who's controlling how much food you get, how much water you get. Next thing, we're seeing is how much air you get, which is what we're seeing right now. Shouldn't even be alive. We know the Palestinians don't even, cannot even drink rainwater. Where is, like what, the, this, the insanity, the rainwater that comes from the heavens above, from, the, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they can't even drink that. The water that falls from the sky to their land, they, they can't even drink that. Who are these people? And how do you not see that? This man, I mean, so many people have sold their souls to the devil a long time ago. And that's why I'm saying, what do they have on this guy? Because he's not talking, he's not making sense. He's more like, it gets worse. Keep watching. Orphan, you know, for them to say that they're blockaded, they're blockaded. Well, yeah, they're blockaded. And not, it's not just Israel blockading them, it's Egypt. Well, okay, everybody has a problem with Hamas. Um, you know, in fact, it, after the after the seventy three war, Egypt. after the sixty seven no, war, Egypt is not black Israel trying to give Hamas Egypt, back. Egypt, Egypt is making sure that large numbers of Palestinians do not come because they know that Israel will never allow them to come back home. So they want to make sure they control their borders. They're not blockading them. Who does he think he's talking to? Back to Egypt, and Egypt didn't want to take it because I mean, Gaza. They, I mean Gaza, yeah. Sorry, Gaza back to Egypt. 
Egypt didn't want to take it because uh, of the you know the high level of sort of religious militant uh, Islam that is that Egypt considered a threat to its own government. Uh, what, but let's but talk then, about let me finish. Sure. Israel, uh, Hamas took over in 2006. Right. And they immediately started shelling Israel. We sent uh, on average 2,000 rockets Whoa. a year on civilian oh, population. Yeah, they took over 2006, and then they 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 decided, oh, you know what? For fun, let's just go ahead and shell Israel. He's so full of nonsense. <laughs> like the story is a 75 year old long, 75 years long. It's not like they've just decided they're gonna shell their neighbors. It's because their neighbors are blockading them. It's the only nation in the world where people cannot even claim refugees because they can't, well, the only, not, I, I shouldn't say country, but the only, there's supposed to be a country, but the only place on earth where you don't even have any place to run. The, the reason why, like, the whole world is watching right now, it's because it's the only place that is under fire and with no military, um, you know, no, it's not even a country, yet the fourth most powerful nation in the world is bombarding them. At this point, they've used bombs equal to three nuclear bombs on the most dense, you know, place on earth. And the civilians, people cannot, they, they have nowhere to run. Oh, heartless coward, this guy. And their, their charter and their public statements day after day are, they don't, they, it's, it is, uh, it's against Islamic law for them to even negotiate with Israel, except as a ruse. It says that in their charter. They, um, they their Islamic law. There's no Islamic law that says you cannot negotiate with anyone. He's, he's a liar. They just cannot cuddle and love their occupier, which is what the world's asking for them to, 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 to do. <laughs> cuddle and love and submit to your occupier. To your, um, you know, the 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 to the people who kill your family, who are not, you know, who are basically keeping you hostage, who are humiliating you daily. Why don't you just, why don't you just love them, submit to them? Garbage. The only satisfaction for them, the only goal, is to. And I let Israel and kill every Jew, not just in Israel, but all around oh the world. Oh my God! So, He's such Israel. A liar. I can't believe this guy is a Kennedy. The only satisfaction, he says, the only satisfaction, and the only thing that will suffice is for them to kill, annihilate Israel and kill every Jew. What a liar! He's repeating the same talking points of the IDL and and um, IDF and. Um, APAC. Not true. Who the hell? Liar. A liar. That's not what they're trying to do. We don't, Muslims don't hate Jewish people. But any group of people, regardless, if your occupier is another Muslim, of course you're going to, you're going to hate them and you're going to try to fight, fight back against them. If your occupier is your family, if your family is trying to keep you hostage, your own family members, the human nature is that you will fight back. What a nonsense this guy is spewing. They must have something on him. And so it's like a list is given to him of talking points and it's like, just keep repeating that. He's so even uncomfortable. His actions are uncomfortable. Oh, instead of going in and you? attacking, you know, if, if Mexico, elected a communist government and the communist government began sending shells onto civilian populations in San Antonio and Houston and say, we're, you know, we're going to retake Texas, which they have a legitimate claim to. We're going to retake it. Um, how long would it take us to go in there? It wouldn't take us very long. We would go in and we this would do whatever like, it did. Uh, like, oh, okay, okay. So if, if, okay, this is such a nonsensical. He says, if, if, if Mexico decided that they would 
reclaim taxes, for example, or even in California, that matter, many parts of this country belongs to, originally belonged to uh, Mexico. Um, how long would it take us to attack them? It's not, this is, one has, you cannot, this, you cannot equate Mexico, which is a nation that attacked another nation, in this case, the United States, to Palestine, which has no army. It's not even a nation. Gaza at that, not even Palestine, just Gaza, a just strip that is as, big as Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. has what? Like 600,000 people living there? The population of 600,000? Gaza has 2.5 million. It's the most dense populated, most densely populated space on Earth. And if if Mexico decided to come and, and reclaim Texas, for example, yes, it would be like two countries at war with each other. And of course, Mexicans in this country, first of all, Mexico lost that land a, a very, very long, I mean, a long time ago. I don't know in the, what was it, 16 or 1700s? I can't, I can't think of it right now, but anyway, a couple of hundred years ago. And uh, Mexicans today in America are Americans. We don't have different roads for them. They're not isolated from the rest of the American people. We don't segregate people anymore. Americans live together. All the people of this land, even if you're not an American citizen, live under one rule, under one flag, under one nation, and under one law. That's not what's happening in Palestine. People's lands were stolen. In the West Banks and many, you know, in the West Bank, for example, they live under an apartheid rule. They can't even walk on the same road. They can't even, I mean, it, it's so humiliating. They cannot even, they have to go around and walk for hours to get to their house, which is like five minutes if they decide to go to the market. Their lives are making are made in a living hell. This is the 20th freaking century. I mean, 20th first century, I apologize. 20th first century. <laughs> we don't live like that anymore. We don't treat each other like that anymore. This is the last leg of colonization and apartheid. And for you to speak for it and cuddle them and not take a stand against it and be a Kennedy is shameful, 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 shameful. How dare you equate Mexico with Gaza? Countries can fight and have always fought on, ter you know, uh, uh, with uh, territorial uh, uh, claims and etc. It can be the most powerful country, one of the most powerful countries like Russia versus Ukraine. These things happen, but at least there are two countries, two nations fighting. Why are we... <laughs> Oh, let's keep hearing this idiot. He makes no sense. He's so, I can't believe I have, I, I, I am more, I have more history. I can probably teach him a lot or he knows what's up. He's very smart. I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, he, he just doesn't care. He's just trying to gaslight the Palestinian claim or the Palestinian people. Um, he's just, th these people should be ashamed. Things have changed. The world sees what's happening, and it's clear who the terrorists are. Take out the people who are sending this challenge, and Israel, instead of doing that, 
Israel did something extraordinary, which is it invested in an iron dome. There's, there's thousands, tens of thousands of Israelis that have, on that part of Israel that have been raised in bomb shelters. Well, why? Who would put up with that? There's so, nobody in the no world. One, no one here is excusing yeah. the actions yeah. of Hamas. But I think you would agree that uh, one atrocity does not justify another. So how can you, hold on. Well, but, but how, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, how wait, can no, you say, no, though, no, how can you say? Calling it an atrocity. I, I haven't finished my question. Right, go ahead. How can you say like, that Israel is doing everything they can to avoid yeah. civilian death when the civilian death toll, even by Israeli estimates, and this is the low, this is the best possible number you could put on it, is 61% innocent civilians thousands of children, thousands of women. That's worse than the combination of every 20th century con conflict you, combined. So, for, so how can you look at that and combine with the complete siege of 2.2 million people and say that they are doing everything they can to protect civilian life? First of all, what you said is not true. We killed, not true? We killed 750,000 civilians in Iraq. She's talking percentage-wise. What? She's percentage talking percentage-wise. Percentage wise. Wise. Really, the, the, oh the, the, the percentage it's of like the average- We Americans killed 750,000 civilians. So he's defending Israel. He's actually throwing America under the fire, <laughs> you know, under the bus, <laughs> you know, uh, stating that we kill more people. We're actually worse than they are. We're the bad people. Israel, oh, beautiful. Mwah. We love them. They're just, oh, they're just, just perfect. But America, bad, bad, bad. America killed 750. America killed more than that. I mean, since America became a... Uh, uh, you know, um, an empire. I mean, it's it has pretty much the only place that actually uh, that well, not the only place, but well, yeah, the the it it has only been projecting its power towards the east, um, pretty much, and the last forty years against the Muslim world, basically. I mean, the only time we flex our muscles <laughs> is when we're when we're just killing Muslims. But anyway, um, you know, basically it's like the bully, the big bad bully taking the, the lunch of the little, you know, a, a much smaller kid um, who is, <laughs> uh, the bully also is not by himself. The bully has like a lot of other, you know, bunch of uh, 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 idiots around him that would, because they're afraid of him, they have to actually do what he says they should do. But anyway, why did we kill seven? Let's just say 700,000 people, what, 750. Why did we kill them? Al-Qaeda was not there. Saddam didn't do anything to us in Iraq. So why are you even, why are you even mentioning that? Shameful. Kill right in Afghanistan, in Afghanistan, Mosul, in those battles, in modern warfare is about eight or nine to one civilians to military. And you think that's fine? Eight well, percent civilian death. You're fine well, with that? I, I don't think a single civilian death is fine. I'm not a single, but when we went into Germany to get out the Nazis, mm -hmm. we killed two million Germans. Which is why. Oh, and actually, there's oh, but it was but we killed this many. America was so bad, we killed this many in Iraq. Israel, on the other hand, very kind, very kind. Uh, oh, Germany! Now he's going to jump to Germany, but she's going to she's going to put him in his place. An analysis that just came out that showed the bombing of northern Gaza has been more devastating and more destructive than our bombing of Dresden. Mm -hmm. I would also say, after World War II, that's why we put in place things like the Geneva Conventions mm -hmm. to make sure that we did as much as we could to protect civilian life. Yeah. Washington Post, we can put this up on the screen, guys. This is the second element. R two. The Washington Post just reported that Israel dropped. U.S. supplied white phosphorus in an attack in yes. Lebanon in a, a way that is inconsistent with the laws of war, directly impacting a civilian population. Are these, now you might say, look, we, maybe the report's in dispute. Maybe we need to go and investigate. But is this or any other of Israeli conduct in this war, is this something that you think should be investigated um, for potential violations of international law? Again, if Israel dropped white phosphorus on civilian populations illegally, mm -hmm. then they should be prosecuted for war crimes. Yeah. But I don't think there's strong evidence that they've done absolutely <laughs> right. there is a legal, there are legal ways to use white phosphorus. Mm -hmm. And Israel says that's what's doing. Here's what Israel has done. Israel has made calls people before they bomb them. Nobody else in the world does that. It's, it's made 20,000 live calls. So somebody, an Arab. We're not going to, we're not going to listen to his rhetoric anymore. He's just, he's, he's, he's.
is doomed. This guy, you know, in conclusion, he must have done something really bad, I'm thinking. Um, you know, that he um, he's hiding something and uh, he's being blackmailed. There's no other way of, uh, you know, <laughs> saying this. Um, but I, I saw an interview with Marianne Williamson. She's also running um, to be the next president of the United States as a Democrat. And she's just, <laughs> she was so uncomfortable. She, she was basically using the same talking points. And you can tell that these people are, you know, um, they're being supported and they're being um, recruited or they've been recruited by um, APAC. And um, they have something on everybody, you know, and so, uh, but I feel I feel I feel sorry for him. He's just I don't know how he like a lot of the people who are doing this now who are um, um, behaving like this and who are aligning themselves on the wrong side of of, of history. Um, I give them a year or two. I mean, they 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 they'll they'll really have a hard time because things have changed since the Iraq War and. Um, you know, uh, the next generations are, are not going to put up with this nonsense and um, they will just end up hiding and, and, and you know, in a very dark place and, 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 and will probably live in a life of misery um, what's left um, in what's left uh, 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 in their, you know, of their life. Uh, it's it's pretty pathetic and uh, it's it's just it's very sad that people with everything we're seeing they still think that the American people and 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 humanity in general is not seeing <laughs> what it's seeing. They're the ones who need to uh, go back to the drawing board and we educate themselves and wake up to the new reality that this rogue nation called Israel is, is just destroying itself. And um, yeah, and, and, and have already, have already done that, I think. And um, it's, uh, it's truly sad that there are, there are plenty of wonderful Jewish people. It's creating, they're the ones who are creating anti-Semitism uh, for, the Jewish community, rather than others, um, you know, going after them. He, he, in the end, he's going to say, "Why are we? Why are we attacking Jewish people? Or why are we like this? Has nothing to do with Judaism. Nothing, zero. And everyone knows it, and you guys knows know, know that as well. But you're just deflecting and um, gaslighting the truth." It's not about Judaism, it's about Zionism. It's about these people who are trying to be the first nation that is ethno, you know, ethnically just one religion, basically just white Europeans. <laughs> and, 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 and they're not even hiding it. They're not hiding the fact that they don't like anyone else, including the Christians, by the way. And they're so arrogant and shameless. Anyway, I'm done. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, I'll be doing more reactions, inshallah, and uh, keep joining me. Thank you very much.